Have you ever wondered how animals you knew could do or have things you never expected? Yeah, that's right. Nature can be surprising sometimes. Like, honestly, how the hell did they get there? Okay, I don't know, but at this point the laws of physics are not being respected. Imagine only finding out that snails can jump in your 20s. And monkeys blowing whatever the hell this is. Today we're going to be looking at some animal facts most of us didn't know about. Now this animal is famously known as Black Panther. And that's because there's no actual name for it. Well, let me explain. Black panthers are not a separate species, but are rather big cats with pigmentation problems and excess of melanin, which is a pigment responsible for the black coloration. Think of it as an albino. The reason they're called black panthers is because they could be almost any big cat, the reason why the name suggests it's an unidentified species. This condition can be found not only among big cats, but also among small cats like bobcat, servals, golden cats, jungle cats, ancelas, geoforest cats, and cod cod. As for the big fellas, this condition is only being confirmed among jaguars and leopards, with jaguars being on the top. You can tell that these are not a separate species, but when they're exposed to light, you can actually see the spots in their bodies. Although some claims suggest sightings of black cougars, which are part of the small cats by the way. Not one specimen was ever photographed, meaning there's no enough evidence to cover up these claims. But this here is not fake, this was actually photographed. This is a cougar with losism, which is the opposite of melanism. And this, yeah, a lot of people still believe that this is real, but actually it was photoshopped. So once again, no black lion has ever been confirmed to exist out there. Now this condition is very uncommon, in fact we only have a very few black panthers out there. And that's due to the fact that recessive alleles are responsible for this, which have no priority when combined with dominant allele. In order for this to occur, two recessive alleles carrying this genetic information must combine. When a recessive allele combines with a dominant allele, the priority goes to the dominant allele which means that this cannot occur. Both individual parents have to carry at least one recessive allele for this to occur. Now you understand why this condition is pretty rare. And then we got these two. Now this is where this gets crazy and maybe confusing. Just like black panthers, white lions and tigers are not a separate species. They are a color morph of a regular lion and tiger. Their white color is a result of a mutation in their fur color gene. Same thing that happens with golden tigers. They result through inbreeding, which is the mating of closely related individuals. So it's more likely to find these in zoos, circuses, and breeding farms, rather than in the wild. Because people intentionally breed them. Only a handful of these beautiful creatures have been seen in the last 100 years. Today, about or a little more than 500 white lions are scattered around the world in circuses, zoos, and breeding farms. White tigers are even rare to find. The only white tigers out there are Bengal tigers. Like any other unnatural action, inbreeding comes with its own side effects. Like what happened to this poor guy? His name was Kenny. And he had what's known as Down syndrome. This is a genetic disorder where an individual gets an extra chromosome, which is a copy of the last chromosome. Chromosomes determine how an individual is going to be formed and how it's going to behave. Individuals with Down syndrome are born with deformation and mental problems. A normal tiger would have 38 chromosomes, and our buddy here wasn't the regular kind of tiger, along with his brother Willie. He then died of cancer at age 10 in 2008, followed by his brother who died two years later. Their other siblings died right at birth, which is another problem of inbreeding, so you don't want to mate with any of your close relatives. I bet you thought these dudes were dogs. See? Even they're laughing at you. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that they're not. They're actually from a suborder called Filiformia, which includes cats, vivarids, lingzangs, mongooses, and many others. When I saw this, I was still resistant to believe that these were not dog-like. This is a striped hyena, this is a brown hyena, and this is an art wolf. Wait, an art wolf? Then why isn't it in the dog-like category? Oh, and of course, our spotted hyena. These all account for a different species of hyena. But trust me, when I saw this, and this, that was when I realized that this was a pretty angel. I mean, just take a look at them. They reminded me of Reddick. Yeah and the made up for my nightmare. This leads us to these guys. Not only do they hold the title for the fastest cat, but also for the fastest land animal. But what's so unique about them is the fact that they're the only cats with unretractable claws, almost like dogs. This is what gives them great traction when sprinting, which is pretty awesome. But this becomes a problem when it comes to hunting, because they can't firmly grab big prey, and given how lightly built they are, but they do have these sharp claws, which makes them not be completely useless. Zebras are now white with black stripes, but the opposite. Of course, you'll see most parts covered in white, but that's just their fur color. If you shave off their fur, then you'll see complete black. I mean, zebras just like playing with colors they don't have. Just like this guy here. A lion's mane is not the reason they're the king of the jungle. They're actually entitled kings due to how they live in their society. Given that they're the only social species in the cat family, although cheetahs could also be social at some point, but that's only until the cubs are fully grown and the females raise the cubs alone. The males don't. Unlike cheetahs, lions live in a social pride for a lifetime. 
and they have rankings, with the male lions being on the top. In addition to this, they are known as a symbol of courage, meaning that they stand the ground almost against anything, including the elephants on some occasions, which they are smart enough to realize that that's a death sentence. But for them, it's try or die. Lions also have the loudest roar of all big cats. They can be heard from up to about 5 miles. The loud roaring is used for long distance communication, to promote contact or spacing with other lions. Now as loud as these guys sound, they are not as terrifying as tigers. Trust me, if a tiger roars close to you, your soul might as well die along with your Body. That's because a tiger roar can paralyze anyone who hears it. Now the lion's mane reflects its physical condition. Stronger and healthier males have longer and darker mane. That is how females pick their stronger mates. Males on the other hand, use the mane as a threat to other males. They know when it's not worth risking their lives by tangled with stronger males. Well that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed it and wait for more. And be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok.